Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and I make videos about hand sewing, hand quilting and English paper piecing. So if that's something that you are interested in, do give me a subscribe and check out the other videos on my channels. Everywhere else that you can find me on the internet is listed down in the description box as well. I do regularly post to Instagram and TikTok. But today I'm coming to you with an update on my quilt as you go rectangle brick quilt, I think I called it to begin with. Now lots of you have left comments asking to see this finished quilt and I have a confession to make that I haven't finished this quilt. <laughs> If you watch any of my other videos, you'll know that starting new projects is where I specialise in and finishing them, that's not so much my forte. <laughs> but this year, I have made a promise to myself that each month I'm going to work on a different project that I've got ongoing as the main thing that I'm going to work on that month. And this I've been working on for the last two weeks or so. So I didn't quite manage to get the full January on this project and now we're into February, it's February the 2nd. So I think in February I'll be working on a different project. <laughs> I think so many of you can relate to this. This is why we have projects on the go, we pick them up when we fancy and I thought now would be a really good time to show you how far I've got in this quilt but spoiler alert, it's not a finished quilt, it's nowhere near. It's more like a large cushion cover at the moment. <laughs> but there has been so many wonderful comments over the last couple of weeks when I've been sharing this across social media. So many of you guys have commented saying that you've either bought the templates to make this quilt or your X number of blocks into the quilt, like 500 into the quilt or something, which is amazing. It, it certainly does give me a run for my money. <laughs> So if you're unfamiliar, I'll give you a glimpse of it here. So this is two rows that I need to join. I've been doing mine in three rectangles and one square per sort of row. And I don't really recommend joining them in much longer rows than this because I find it so boring to join even these four blocks together. So I think next time I'm going to do them in blocks of two. And this is a quilt made with a template from a lovely company called Daisy and Grace. They're based here in the UK, but they do ship internationally. And you can also purchase the templates through um, Missouri Star Company. And here is a look at the templates. So they actually come in two parts. You've got the external part and then the internal part and they're very thick templates so you can actually use them for cutting. Some people like to draw around the shapes and then cut with scissors but I use these perfectly fine with a rotary cutter. And with mine I've got the five inch rectangle so it's five inch by two and a half inch and then I've paired that with the two and a half inch square. Then all I've done, you won't use the square that often, I've just used the square at the start of every other row and then it will be at the end of the opposite row. Just to even the, um, the whole project out and to give it this staggered brick effect. You can obviously do it without the square but you would have an uneven edge and you would need to be careful that you was starting it at the same point. Yeah, so you'd need to be careful that you start it at the same point every time to make sure that it's overall, the brick effect is even throughout the whole row and I guess throughout the whole quilt because if you wasn't careful, it could perhaps slide off to the side. So I do recommend using it with the square. So let me show you how much I've completed. So shall we do a drum roll for how far I've got? <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got this oh, and then I've got these two rows that need attaching and I've got six there that are prepared and ready to sew but I just need to get my finger out and do that So the fabric that I'm using for this project, I bought a fat quarter bundle of Tilda, um, I'm not sure what collection it was, I don't know if it was a mixed collection, but I bought a fat quarter bundle and I also had some scraps. I think what happened was 
not last year, the year before, at the Festival of Quilts, I bought the Tilda scrap bag. And then at the Festival of Quilts last year, I bought the Fat Quarter bundle. And they do work together quite well. So I don't think it's just one collection of Tilda that um, is in this quilt. And then the backing fabric has this really nice um, texture to it. A lot of people ask me if it's calico or muslin, but it's actually Moda Grunge. And I think it's in the colourway sugar cookie. And it's got tones of green, it's got white, cream, and then very subtly some tones of like orangey, peachy colours. And I think that ties together really nicely with the quilt. Now, the Moda Grunge, I was surprised when I went to order it, just how many colours it comes in. It comes in so many wonderful colours. And it adds a really nice sort of variegated back into it because don't forget this quilt at this point is double-sided. You can turn either side and it will look brilliant. You can also, with this quilt, sort of alternate the colours that you do. So you could do every other one in one colour on the back and then another colour. And then you've got a double-sided quilt, then it'll be patterned on both sides. So that's a really good um, selling point of this quilt. Now what I do when I'm making my pieces up, when I'm originally basting them, I put clips to base them. I did use pins to start with, but I find the clips a little bit easier because then what I do is I take the clips off and I actually thread base them. Now the reason that I do that is because when I'm sewing, and you'll know if you have done this type of project or any project that involves pinning things in place, your thread gets caught around the pins or the clips so much and it frustrates the hell out of me. So I thread base them and then you minimise how much your thread actually gets caught around the project and it's a little bit of a more enjoyable sewing experience. So what I do is I sit there and I base some together. So I've got some here, I've got six here. So this will do me another two rows, but now I'm gonna start working out on the quilt rather than going down. I'm going to start working outwards. So applique stitch the edges down on these and then just join them together. And then when I feel like it, I'll join them onto the larger piece. And what I've also got is a stack here a stack here of wadding cut to size and then I've put the backing fabrics directly on. Now someone left a comment on one of the videos to say that when you cut them if you iron the fabric on even though it's not iron on wadding or anything like that it seems to stick and it creates a much more flusher quilt because when I did a first few the um, fabric has puckered away from the wadding only ever so slightly it doesn't affect the quilt but a way to get them really nice and consistent is just to run the iron over so that's what I do when I'm cutting and um, preparing this project I just run the iron and pair the two the wadding and the fabric together and it seems to stick really nicely I don't actually iron them at any point after that. I don't iron them at this point and I don't iron them when they're put together. When I am creating the blocks and basting them, I do use a seam roller. This is just one that I purchased from Amazon. No, I didn't. I purchased this one from Timu. It was only a couple of pounds, if even that, but you can purchase this as a multi-pack on Amazon. I think it's five or six pounds for a multi-pack, or you can get other ones. Some that are a bit more weightier because this one is quite, it's just plastic. You can get some ones with really nice wooden rollers. And I also like with this project is that this will allow me to use up scraps of my batting batting or wadding I keep think I keep changing my mind of which one I'm calling it but you can see there the rectangle fits on there brilliantly so you can really use up lots of little scraps that you might have it's also a great way to use up um fabric scraps I know Nicola who is the owner of Daisy and Grace she designs these templates to work with things like jelly rolls two and a half inches brilliant you could cut that from a jelly roll and that saves you a lot of cutting because that's just not my favorite part of a project I like to just get stuck in and do the sewing so do leave me a comment down below and let me know your favourite part of the project. I think for a lot of people it is stitching the binding down, which is my favourite part and my least favourite is the cutting. Maybe also the purchasing of the fabric, that is a good part of <laughs> the process.
So the thing that I do really enjoy about this quilt is that um, there's sort of no end, no end size or anything because this whole thing is finished. If I wanted to, I could just put a few more rows on that and, and call it a table topper. You know, you don't have to have a finished size in mind. You can just keep adding to it. And even after you've used it, if you want to add more to it, you can do because it's finished. There's no raw edges. You don't have to have a definitive size in mind, which is really good. The only downside for me is that sometimes it does hurt my hand doing this type of sewing. I think it's the applique stitch that hurts my hand. So I've recently purchased a, um, not a thimble, it's for gripping the needle. So it's made out of silicon and this just reduces the strain because I hold my needle like this and I seem to get some strain here and also a little bit of strain there. So I thought if this helps me grip the needle a little bit more, it might reduce some of the strain. I don't tend to need a thimble for pushing it through. I don't do that type of action with this sewing. Um, so I don't need to worry about that type of thimble, but I just thought for gripping the needle, this might work. So if you also struggle with any finger pains with sewing, you could give this a go. But for me, the type of patchwork that I love is the type that has loads of colours in there, loads of patterns. And this type of project really does tick all of those boxes for me. Because you can have all of these different colours and different patterns, but because it's separated by the white or your backing fabric, it really just makes everything so cohesive together. I, I really do enjoy this method. If you would also like to try this project, I'll leave the link to um, the Daisy and Grace shop down in the description. You can check out all of their templates that they've got and including these ones. This is not an advert for them. I don't get paid or any type of commission. I know that I've just been singing the praises of this project, but I just love it. It's such a nice quilt. And then when you're done, it's done. There's no binding or backing to think about. Um, so I'll leave the link for that down in the description. And I've also got some tutorials. I think there's three or four videos of tutorials on creating this project. So I'll also leave the links to those in the description box as well, if you'd like to check those out. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how far I've gotten on this quilt and I am really sorry to those people who expected me to have finished this quilt by now. To that I'll say two things. Number one, I am to blame because I am a, so, a slow sewer. But number two, this I am hand sewing this project so it will take a little bit longer. You know, hand sewing quilts do take a long time. Um, especially when you've got five other projects on the go. So I am to blame for some of that as well. But if you are like me, please leave a comment down below just so I don't feel so alone with my slow progress on my projects. If you do have any other questions or you're not sure on anything about this project, do leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you with that. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. You take care and bye bye.